Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bear's Homesteading the Desert. It is September 27th, 2018. And remember yesterday, there were some panels on the trailer. Well, that's what's left of them. And I'm going to show you what I got done today. I got my ATV out and I rigged up a connection that is lagged into the base of the um, temporary laundry. Then I made up a chain with an S-Link in it with some uh, round stock and I hooked that over the ATV trailer hitch and I dragged this unit out. So I got it away from the, uh, the cabin so that I could get this sheet up, get my cover on my GFI and uh, I'm, I've got another sheet to go here so that I can do the, finish making my uh, water connections outside of the unit here. And uh, that stub out down there, of course, is the uh, propane stub out that I put in a, a long time ago. And that could either end up being for a, a dryer if I ever decide to get one, but I don't think so. I like the smell of my clothes when they come off of a nice, clean clothesline. And uh, the air out here is fairly good, you know. I, I, there's not a lot of smog. I don't smell a lot of uh, fire and things like that. So I like on the line. I might just, just use that down the line when I do a patio outside of the cabin here and I'll hook up a propane barbecue to that a really nice propane barbecue because I love to cook and uh, when I have some friends over we can sit out here in the shade because this will shade me from the sunlight now because the, uh, that's the south side of the cabin so that gets all the sun over there this side is pretty much shady as you can see and even though we're late in the day here I still have plenty of shade all right, let me move around and show you what else I did here. Okay, I got another sheet up here coming up to the door, and I got my um, eaves parts going up inside of there, and then around the back, I got my eave caps on all the way along, and I have some um, angle metal that I do use to cover those corners so that they're weatherproof. And then, of course, that whole face should be covered by a gutter. Um, I'm going to separate it from that one because I, wa I want that one to drain to that side. And this one is going to drain to this side. I may tie them together in the sender to just pulling the cap off. Uh, but uh, that one's already sloping down that way. So I'm going to have this one slope down this way. And I'll have my rain catching barrel right down here at the bottom. And I've got to do some grading back here yet. And then I've got to cut off that pipe below ground and put a cap on it. I can use that for future use. And then I'll be able to get my propane bottles in and out with my little hand truck. All right. I've had some questions about the use of metal studs. And uh, I'm going to show you that on the four foot runs, what I do is I put on the, on the two foots, I put the, the studs in the regular position here. But on the forefoots, I put two the opposite direction and then use some pieces of the track, which is the bottom plate and the top plate. And then I, I tie them together in the center here. So that becomes a pretty sturdy four by four. And that holds some weight. Let, let me tell you, I can go up on the roof of this thing with two foot centers and jump up and down and get just the slightest vibration. And this truss setup that I do here, um, these hold really well. I've also um, run them where I've um, cut and used track underneath the pintons here to hold those um, sturdier. And then I have two tracks running along. I don't need them in, the, in this little 10 foot wide unit, but uh, uh, in some of the larger units, and, and I've been doing this for a lot of years. Uh, when I'm doing a, um, a double wall or a sound wall, I'll use two by threes inside of there. But when I'm doing a wall between rooms and stuff like that I use um, two by fours or the equivalents of two by fours they're actually three and five eighths not three and a half like a, a wooden two by four so you get a little bit of extra metal on those and uh, gives you a little extra sturdiness and then of course you can use little scraps of, uh, of the uh, track and stuff like that to um, set up things where you're going to hook up your um, plumbing um, uh, grab bars things like that inside the wall that's going to be where the sink hangs so i i put one inside there i'm going to have grab bars inside of here but i'm going to, not going to put those in until i put the insulation in that wall and uh then i'll add those over the top of the insulation so it makes it a little easier for working and uh 
You can also see in here I uh, tried out my uh, shower head fixture to see how that's going to work. So I can turn the water on and then I just just turn this lever down and the shower comes out and then when I get wet I can close it off and shut the water off at the head and that keeps my temperature settings in the valve at the same setting so I don't have to turn it off here and turn it on turn it off and turn it on I'll do it up there and uh, of course I'm going to have a, a tub spout in there that'll have a uh, a lift up type lever in it I may uh, modify that and I may make my own type of tub spout that actually has another valve like this in it so I can shut it off down there to, to turn shower up here and that gives me a solid turn off so you know how when you usually pull that little tub lever up you still have some dripping water coming out of the tub spout well in the desert water is a precious commodity and every one of those drips can grow a plant so I'm not going to waste water down the drain if I don't have to and having positive shutoffs on it is probably a better thing and maybe I'll uh, I'll run it on my milling machine and I'll mill up a nice piece of uh, uh, polished aluminum or brass or whatever and uh, make a neat little looking tub spout uh, maybe something that looks like a bear or something <laughs> just kidding all right so you can see here the sidings on the wall and I've got the uh, four by four here with my um, tied together here with my plates on it. So that's a pretty solid wall. And that's that's now um, only got 50% of the screws in it. You can see them there. I'm going about a foot apart on them. And I'm going to have those every six inches on every stud when I'm done. And then on the outsides of where the 4x4s are, there's a 1x4 piece of wood that covers the seams and that really seals the, the weather in, especially since I run a bead of silicone down the center of the seam where the two sheets come together. And then I'll uh, also put two runs of uh, zigzag silicone on the backs of the 1x4 before I press it into place. So they're, they're completely weather tight when, it, when it's all done. And uh, that cabin, I, I spent the last winter in there and temperatures down in the 17, 19 degree range. And uh, the space heater inside running, or the wall heater inside, a little propane wall heater, uh, bought at Home Depot. That was a, a great little heater. It kept me warm in there. And then on the average nights when it was 20 to 30 degrees outside, well, heck, only the pilot light in there uh, kept me up at 68, 69 degrees inside the uh, cabin. The heater never turned on all night long. Good insulation. That's a, an important thing. All right, next question I had was about um, controllers and hybrid controllers. And uh, my uh, subscriber was uh, asking about these controllers right here. All right, if I was going to do it again, I would not buy them. These are hybrid wind and solar, okay? So you got your, your three-phase wind tie up in here, and then you have your automatic, and this is an MPPT. So this one has an automatic um, dump load built into it. So you can tie your dump load into there. The problem is that this doesn't tell you when it's doing that stuff. And the Chinese instructions that come with it, well, let's just say you bet, you're better off hooking it up and then figuring out what it does um, while it's hooked up because you can't understand what they're trying to say in the instructions. Okay, this is uh, a uh, PWM, and this, this one is the same thing. This is a hybrid system controller, and it's got the wind and the solar inputs up here, but it doesn't have the dump load in it. It has the standard... Um, uh, lines out here. These are your lines of your battery and these would be for lights and, and such and so forth. This has that same thing but it has the dump load set up on the top here so you can go to a resistor like this and not overcharge your batteries. Okay. Again, if I was going to do it all over again, I would never buy those. I would buy a good MPPT um, controller just for the solar or a couple of them because 
you got to get your ratings on those depending on how much solar you're going to have. So if this thing is rated for 600 watts, you don't want to tie 1,300 watts of solar into it. Um, it's going to cause you problems down the line. So you got to have multiples. That's why you see so many up here because they've gone down the line. This piece of junk, Ecoworthy, is the one that came with the um, the wind turbine that's a piece of crap up there and I originally was using that and all it has is lights that say um, in use or battery or charge or discharge you have no clue what the thing is doing it's a piece of crap so what would I do if I was going to do it all over again I'd go this way I would buy this uh, power analyzer which was $16 and I'd buy a rectifier which was $16 so for $32 I can replace the um, solar part of that uh, MPPT up there that was like $170 online so, so the pricing is just the way to go and this rectifier is for a three-phase AC um, turbine. Now these are all for AC turbines. You notice it has three connections all the same color so it doesn't matter which way you would ar arrange them on there. You can't use those for a DC output uh, turbine. So if you've got a two wire which actually has three wires because it'll have your um, positive, negative, and ground. But the positive and negative are your, are your main wires those won't work on this system so you don't want to use that on this th these type of controllers you have to get yourself a different controller for a DC output and for those I would just go with a DC output I would just go directly to the batteries with the uh, turbine input and then I would set up one of these which is a dump load unit and I'm, I'm staying on this this is a PWM but it's a good little dump load unit and what this does is it, it if the batteries reach the setting that I have on this for the amount of charge that's coming into the batteries then this solenoid clicks in and ties these two lines together and that sends the power over to my load and that this little thing will get hot it's cold right now because that turbine doesn't do crap for me. It's a piece of junk. But if it was working properly and we're getting the winds I was having and getting the large input that these things can put out, then yes, this thing would be definitely working. But I wouldn't use that. I would use the water heater element, 300 watt water heater element I've got outside at my outdoor shower and that would heat up hot water for me in the winter time and preheat my water so I could run that down into my cabin and let my tankless water heater have a break from trying to heat up ice cold water all right well that's about all I have for today people um, any more questions I'm more than happy to answer them for you uh, wiring diagrams anything like that uh, take a little bit more time I'm going to make a run in to town tomorrow and see if I can get uh, five more sheets of siding and that will close in everything except the door so I'll, I can put a temporary plywood door on there or whatever so that I can work on the inside I can even build a, a real cheap plywood door and hang on there for uh, $25 or so but um, I'm looking at the door that I want for that. It's going to cost me uh, a little over 250 bucks. I think it's 267 or something like that. And um, that's a Malibu door with a sliding window in it, so I can open it up and let some air flow through there. And um, I, that will be once I got the rest of this all closed in. That will be my next step is to get that door on there so it's locked in. And then after that. Um, next check when, or when next earnings for the earnings come in then those that money will go to buying insulation for the inside here so I don't have to have drywall on the walls if I've got the walls insulated and 
Um, the inside of this closed up and sealed so bugs and critters and stuff like that can't get in. And then I can uh, take my time working inside of there. Of course, I don't want to start moving furniture in that I'm going to have to move out again to, to do the work. So I probably will um, end up buying the drywall to finish the bathroom wall so I can use the uh, bathtub in the winter time. And then the, uh, I can also put the flooring in down in there once I, uh, the, the bathroom flooring in once I get the drywall on the rest of the walls. And then I will um, insulate and drywall um, the area around the bed on the back side so I can get my bed into place and then I can take my time doing the rest of the finish work. That's it. Enjoy everybody. G-Bear signing off.